Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Lazarus. We're going to talk about the other three Allegiance Arts books here. There's three of them. So there's, all, there's the fourth one, of course, Red Rooster, first issue. I got a separate review of that. You can go check that out, see what I think about it. Uh, but here we got three more books. And there's stuff I liked about each one. Uh, this one, about this awesome lawman here. True story, based on a true story. It's kind of slow. So we start off, you know, cops in a shootout, then another lawman talking to the preacher after the funeral. And he's like, look, there's nothing I can do. But we need a new kind of lawman. And now the rest of this issue pretty much is spent building up this mythological character and how, like, super bad he is. And lots of talking about it. And lots more talking about it. But if you look, man, it's clear why this dude does not want to go get in this business. Because look at this, man. This is like the start of Commando. You got John Matrix right here. You know, he's living this idyllic life. He's going out in the woods. He's like petting the baby deer and stuff. He's carrying logs on his shoulder. He's got a kid. Him and the kid are having a great time. And then something happens. And that something that happens changes it. And he becomes, he goes from being, you know, the, this, the father figure, trying to live uh, a good, normal life, to becoming the man who will set the wrongs to rights. And it's pretty cool. It all builds up to, and I don't think there's really any kind of shame, but uh, basically this right here. How menacing is that? It's cool. It's menacing. It's slick. Uh, the writing is a little slow. And that's the main thing I can knock this for. The writing is a little slow. I'm not sure that this, because of that, I'm not sure it was like the right thing to put in Walmart, you know, trying to sell this to kids. This is definitely, uh, you know, you wouldn't sell this to like a 12-year-old. They, they would get bored. They would probably get bored. Speaking of getting bored, man, I got super bored reading The Futurist. And I didn't think I would because it's got this absolutely uh, great-looking art style, which is just crazy. Um, basically, they go on a little adventure to... Uh, dig up some stuff. You know, I'm sure you've seen uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark or some movie like that. You know, you've seen an expedition before. Well, they're expeditioning hardcore. And as they keep going, things go sideways. And they go sideways pretty fast. Uh, the writing did not connect with me at all. The art, on the other hand, connected with me a lot. You can see a lot of character, a lot of style just in these two panels here, which is why I'm showing them off. Like, you got this guy here. He's, like, peeping over, spying on the chaos over here. Uh, dude, giant monster. Yeah, it's cool looking. It's got danger, character. Like, it's got all the stuff. I just did not really enjoy the writing in the book, and that took me out. There's also something different about the paper between this one and this. This is, like, super soft, flexible, uh, like you'd expect a floppy comic to be. This one's got, like, some kind of crink in it or something. Like, when I flex it, it pops. Can you hear this? I don't know if you could hear that, because uh, I got, like, a noise gate on the mic. Uh, but it, it totally pops, and it's got a weird, like, divot right here. And I think the back, maybe, is probably the best way to show the paper quality off. Like, if you look here, you can see this is nice and smooth curve here on Bass Reeves. Over here... See, it's got, like, folds or creases or something in the paper. And I think that's why. I don't know if it got wet at some point or there was, a, like, high humidity when it was in storage or what. But something about that paper is no good. Nora Saga does not have that problem. It's like Bass Reeves. It's in great shape. Oh, speaking of which, I like the backs of these books, by the way. Uh, it's simple, clean. You just throw a logo on. Looks pretty cool. Uh, I have heard from a lot of people that Walmart was actually sticking price stickers on these books. And that seems really unfortunate because uh, then you got to get the sticker off and you're going to lose something from the book. You know, you're going to take ink off at a minimum. Uh, Nora Saga is a young adult story. It's probably the one targeted best to the audience of potential buyers because this is something that you could pick up, you know, and you flip through and you get like some typical young adult drama. And you learn a lot about... Jeez, you learn a lot about the main character, Nora, in, like, the first three pages. Here she is, like, goofing off, 
in a Viking longboat giving a speech while her dad's filming it. Her mom's like, get out of that boat. I spent a year putting this together. Uh, her family, her parents are clearly into each other. Like, this is a good, healthy-looking relationship. She gags, naturally. What a great shot, by the way. That is absolutely fantastic looking. Like, it's a caricature, but it also captures, like, the essence of what a teenager kind of retching at their parents being all, like, kissy-kissy looks like. A-plus job. This one, I really love the art. Bass Reeves' art looked cool. Future's art was gorgeous. Nora Saga blows both of them away. Absolutely. Uh, her mom dies under mysterious circumstances. Man, I'm just going to pop over here. here. Like, oh, I just want to show you this whole book. I love the way Kelsey Shannon's art looks, man. He captures so much with uh, those simple curves. Absolutely. Uh, so, she gets tortured in school. Like, this is a young adult story. What did you think was going to happen? Here she is, look at her, just being miserable. Being miserable, checking on Instagram or whatever. Uh, it had another name, I don't remember what it is. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but it goes from this young adult uh, being tortured in kids, like... Uh, high school society type stuff to, well, you can see it on the cover. I don't want to spoil exactly what happens, but this Viking stuff, uh, which is kind of teased at the very beginning with the longboat, and uh, right here on the cover, factors into the back half of this book. Uh, there's a little bit of, like, other world kind of stuff going on here, and she's thrust in the middle of it, and I'm not sure where it's going, exactly what the mechanism of her getting involved in it is, uh, but it's interesting stuff, and it's fun. Out of the three books here, this is the one I had the most fun with from page one. This one had a pretty darn good payoff when you get to the end and you see him being super cool. Like, that was just great. You get those last couple pages, the payoff is huge. You're like, dude, looks awesome. And the futurists look good, but I didn't, I didn't really like reading it. So, if you're going to buy an Allegiance Art book, if you go to Walmart... This is the one I like the most. And your mileage may vary. You may go, oh, that's a young adult book. I don't want to read that. But I had a lot of fun reading this thing. Uh, it, it reads easy, man. You can pick this up and just start reading it. And Blake Northcott's writing just pulls you in. Kelsey Shannon's art is like a warm blanket thrown around your shoulders to keep you comfortable while you read the book. Man, I'm really talking this one up, aren't I? And I didn't. I tried to assassinate my headset. All right. I think I'm going to get out of here. You all have a great day. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, I can definitely recommend this one. Bass Reeves might be your jam if you're in the mood for a Western. Uh, there's definitely a cool payoff at the end. And I don't know. The Futurists is probably like the perfect book for somebody, but that somebody's not me. But if you want a book that looks absolutely amazing, like you just want to go look at some awesome, awesome art. Dude's art right there. There's his name. His art is the clear highlight of the Futurists. Uh, the coloring is good, too. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. I really enjoyed the coloring, which I'm not sure. It says both Brightweisers worked on the coloring. They did a fantastic job with that. The fire, the desert scene, that stuff was absolutely fantastic. I don't know which one of them worked on it, but it was great looking. All right, I'm out of here. Take care of yourselves, and bye-bye.